assalamu alaikum thank you dr hanan Good. welcome all uh, thank you uh, our training department for this opportunity today we are going to discuss the data collection and the validation of the clapsi rates how we will collect the data and how we will validate the clapsi rates in this crrs program it's actually the revision of all what you have been doing since uh, the electronic surveillance system has been started so you all know these things already this will be just a repetition of what we are doing we are doing all together what is high surveillance surveillance is an ongoing systemic collection analysis interpretation and communication of the data which is essential to planning and implementing the prevention activities we have to collect and then analyze and interpret and share that collection uh, collected data and we should know how to prevent these healthcare associated infections so this is a, uh, an ongoing continuous process where we are collecting the data systemically we are analyzing i mean infection control department all the infection control pra practitioners we are interpreting the data we are communicating our data findings with all of our colleagues especially in the critical care unit where we are focusing for our surveillance currently our focus should be on the collection basically but how it the collection should be the collection should be appropriate it should be correct it should be complete it should be shareable it should be the the information should lead to the prevention of these healthcare associated infections so what we are supposed to do we are supposed to report more we are supposed to report more accurately the data validation what is data validation as you can see if you, we compare from the previous picture that only we we were saying that there is collection analysis and interpretation and sharing of the content and then prevention of these healthcare associated infections what has what is in the start now in the middle now validation yani whatever we are collecting our data should be collected appropriately it should be analyzed and interpreted and shared and prevented the this infection control the healthcare associated infections should be prevented but in the middle what we have found there should be validation the data before it is analyzed and interpreted it should be validated so our focus today is basically on collection of the clapsi data as well as validation of the clapsi data yani how we are supposed to collect it completely and accurately and how we are going to validate that collected data if it is going to help us or not it will it is just collection so we have to make sure that our collected data is appropriate and validated before we go into the detail of collection and validation we have to know what are the surveillance criteria and what are the clinical criteria the surveillance criteria or the surveillance definitions they are distinct from the clinical diagnostic criteria the surveillance definitions are for trending and benchmarking while the clinical definitions are for the treatment and the prognosis and diagnosis of the patient what we have observed in one of our visits that the infection control practitioners they are relying more more on the icu physicians as they are identifying the infections in their own clinical way what we have to do we have to be focus on our surveillance criteria not on the clinical criteria because you might find there are differences in the clinical definitions and surveillance definitions both of them are not same so you have to focus the infection control department have to focus on the surveillance criteria and the clinicians they should focus on the clinical criteria they can because their objective is to treat the patient and diagnose the clinical illness but for us we are not supposed to treat the patient we are not clinicians we are infection control department and we are supposed to focus on the surveillance criteria and we have distinct definitions as we all know based on nhsn definitions of 2022 we have a new system now new electronic system so we have to focus on our surveillance definitions this is very very important because if you confuse both of them together your def the, your definitions will be mixed and you won't be able to identify the healthcare associated infection appropriately for example 
during SSI, this is just an example. For SSI, usually the surgeons, they, they try to, to keep the data with them. They don't want to share the data. The reason is they are the clinicians for those patients for the surgical site infections. They want to hide this data, but you have to focus on all of the file and all the, pa all the uh, patient information to identify the surgical site infection. The same applies to CLAPSI, CAUT, VAP, VAE, and in the dialysis centers. DE dialysis event. The data collection for the CLAPC, as we all know, what we have to collect patients' personal information, which includes the name, age of the patient, gender, date of birth, contact number, address, hospital admission date, ICU admission date, any sign and symptoms which are present at the time of admission, any diagnostic test, any radiological finding, the medical record number of the patient, any MDRO. If the central line is inserted, the date of its insertion, if it is removed, the date of its removal, if it is reinserted, then the date of reinsertion, date of any blood culture sent, and date of any other culture other than the blood when it was sent. Date of results are also important for us, but our main focus is on the date of sample collection and sending to the labs, because that day is important for us because it, we have to depend on that sample. Date of any antimicrobial started, date of CLAPSI event, and date of any other event other than CLAPSI to find out if it is primary bloodstream infection or it is secondary bloodstream infection. Date of transfer to any other unit, date of transfer to any other hospital, date of discharge, and God forbid, if the patient died, then date of death. I hope I have covered most of the points for the data collection of the CLAPC. Where to start? So if you are new in the infection control department and you are told to do the surveillance or the CLAPC surveillance, how will you work? You should have designed a CLAPC surveillance network where you will collect all the information related to the CLAPC central line associated bloodstream infection. What you will do, you will collect the microbiology lab data. You have to do the clinical evaluation of the patient. So where you will collect the microbiology data, you have to go to the lab, microbiology lab. You will go there and collect all the required information. Clinical evaluation where you can do, you have to visit the, uh, the critical care areas or the intensive care units of the healthcare facility where you will find all the detailed information related to the patient. You have to collect the numerator data and the denominator data to collect, uh, to calculate the CLAPC rates. The case ascent ascertainment or the numerator data you are supposed to collect you are supposed to collect the central line days or the denominator days. Then you have to collate the data by all these collections. You will interpret, you will analyze, and you will report. And you will give this feedback to the stakeholders or the owners of the program that what you are doing. The clinical surveillance network or the CLAPC surveillance workflow how it will start, you are supposed to visit the microbiology lab in the morning. You can start from microbiology lab. Try to collect all the positive blood culture results from all the critical care units or the surveillance units of your healthcare facility. Note them down on the line list of cultures. We will go into the detail of the line list also. First, you have collected all the positive blood cultures information from the lab. Then you will go to the to the critical care units where you will follow all the positive blood cultures from the lab in the critical care units. Collect the following data like medical record number, the primary diagnosis of the patient, brief sign and symptoms or the history of the patient, any central line if inserted, the number of times the central lines are inserted along with the site of insertions, the date of central line insertion, removal, and reinsertion as well, and the duration between the first insertion and the second insertion, and so on. 
the date of admission to the hospital and to the critical care unit, any positive culture finding with the date of a specimen collection, not the date of the result is significant for us. The name of microorganism, mention or highlight it if it is a multi-drug resistant organism. In the comments section, mention if it is device associated or not, if it is central line associated or not, it is, it is non-device associated. And mention if it is a healthcare associated event or not, based on the date of admission to the hospital and date of admission to the critical care unit. Follow all the positive blood cultures from all the 16 type of ICUs which are registered in the electronic surveillance system. Most of the hospitals in the kingdom, they have maximum of three to five type of ICUs, where it's very rare that you will find more than five types of ICUs and they are more uh, the medical cities or the specialist hospitals mostly they have more number of icus otherwise you might have one two or three maximum but try to collect all the information from all the critical care units to be registered in our electronic system check the patient's file and discuss the information with the treating physician and the bedside nurse if no central line is inserted and you have found a positive blood culture, it will not be a clapsy. It will not be a central line associated bloodstream infection. So you are you will be excluding these type of infections because our CRRS is basically focused on clapsies, not on the non-device associated infections. You have to check the central line bundle forms and verify if they are filled in an appropriate way or not. Either they are matching with the indications and the clinical condition of the patients or not. Make sure that they are telling the same information which you are observing with the patient. The instructions for preparing the line list, prepare separate paper sheets for different types of specimens, for example, blood, urine, bronchoalveolar lavage, or bell, wound, pus, or any other specimens which are being sent from the patients. Try to collect all the data on the individual sheets per types of specimens so that you will feel it easy while you are collecting all the highest data at the end. Review the cases individually. Highlight the case if it is device associated or centralized associated or if it is healthcare associated infection or community acquired infection. Make a total of all the highlighted cases at the end of the day and report them in the electronic system. Try to report them the same day you have found them so that appropriate prevention activities can be taken. Report all the events at the end of the month together. The line list should be on paper or Excel sheet in your PC or your laptop. And you can keep this, this record online. Excel copy if you want for your own record, but at the time of validation visit, hard copy of the line list should be presented. It's better to save the time, your time and the validator's time at that time. So if you have hard copy, it will be easy for both of you to validate the data and to compare the data, what you have reported in the electronic system and the detailed information of each positive blood culture as well as each case or CLAPSI event. Make a folder. It's better to make a folder, keep monthly record of all the positive cases. A folder should contain 12 months data. Make 12 different sections to be presented to any of the validator or auditor visitor from the region or your cluster or GDIBC. So at the time of visit, you don't need to run here and there to collect all the information. Do not discard the paper record for at least one year so that it is easy for the validator and even for you. Once you have a folder and all the 12 months are sectioned accordingly, you will find it difficult, uh, easier to present your data. This is the line list of the positive microbiological cultures. You can keep it on the paper. The same information that we have told you is supposed to be here. This is the Google link for the Excel sheet. The Excel sheet is like this. It 
it contains all the information but it's still if you want to add any of the section you can add here if you want any information how to maintain the line list keep a record of your CLAPSI surveillance of the positive blood cultures and decision making and review the completeness of the data periodically maintain a line list of positive blood cultures from the patients especially those assigned to the surveillance locations where cultures are drawn and document that you have reviewed them for the possible CLAPSI record the presence or the absence of central line and or whether an isolate was a real pathogen or a contaminant based on the criteria LCBI 1, 2 or 3. Periodically, annually, quarterly and monthly assure that all the positive blood cultures are reported and make sure that the report includes assigned patient location at the time of culture collection, not at the time the report was issued. Do you have any question up till now? Because we will go to the data collection now. Okay. Now let's start the data validation. Data validation, what is data validation? Validation is an act of confirming that a product or a service meets the requirements for which it was intended or built. In case of surveillance, Data validation is the assurance that the reported surveillance data meets the requirements for which it was created. In this case, product or service is high surveillance methods and the intended purpose is the objectives of surveillance strategy. To calculate the survey, to calculate the CLAPSI rates and try to prevent it. For validation, we have to apply the strict definitions to identify the cases. We have to assess the denominator counts, patient days and the central line days. We have to be very accurate in counting these days. The data should be reasonable. It should be complete. It should be consistent. Means free of any errors. It should be formatted in accordance with the system requirements. Here, the system means our electronic system. Data quality should be maintained. Accuracy of the data should be maintained and completeness of the data. Otherwise, if it is not accurate, it is not complete. It, it is useless for us. And it should be, it should tell us the reliability of the surveillance efforts, whatever you are doing in your healthcare facility. The important terms that you need to know for the validation. NHSN surveillance definitions, as you all know that these days we are focusing on NHSN definitions of the year 2022. The central line and the CLAPSI related terms, case definitions, case classification, primary and secondary bloodstream infections, location of attribution, the transfer rule, numerator reporting, denominator reporting, Differentiation of lab confirmed bloodstream criteria 1, which is for recognized pathogen and criterion 2, which is for skin contaminant or commensal. So we should, before we validate our data, we have to know all these terms very well. Now, what is the objective, objective of validation? It is an important step towards assuring that the reported data are actionable and motivate the improved infection control efforts rather than strategies to avoid the accountability of healthcare associated infections. What does it mean that the objective behind this validation is to make our work more easier? It's not the punishment for any of our healthcare worker. The validation doesn't mean that we came here for the punishment. It's to improve our actions and to motivate our infection control staff. It is an iterative procedure process that should be repeated on a scheduled basis, particularly when new databases or software are implemented, like we are doing now. We are updating the system. We have just transited from one system to another with a gap of almost six months. We had Hassan 
program for the last five years. Then after a gap of six months, now we are in Hassan Plus. Accurate high quality surveillance data are important to the infection preventionists for setting the prevention priorities and measuring the impact of their prevention activities. The administration at the hospital or the regional level or the cluster level and us at GDIPC levels, they, we need these data to identify the magnitude of high problems and to measure the infection prevention program success. We want to, we want to know how heavy are these problems of healthcare associated infections and how we will measure of measure the uh, measure all the infection prevention programs how successfully all the programs are going now types of data validation there are three types of data validation which we need to know first is intrinsic then internal and last is external Let's go to them one by one. Intrinsic validation, an automated process built into a computer application that controls the values and the types of the data that are entered into the system. It provides an internal mechanism for assuring the valid data are entered. Here in this case, how we do validate intrinsically by our electronic system, by our system Hassan Plus. The point of entry validation is a process for routinely checking whether the data are reasonable, complete, consistent, and formatted in account. Sorry, in accordance with the system requirements, it does not prevent all the errors and does not assure the quality and completeness of the highest case ascertainment. Second is internal validation. First was intrinsic validation, which is in the form of electronic system. And we have a new system now. I agree that it is not updated very well now, but hopefully inshallah soon it will be updated because continuously they are working. Hassan Plus team is working on it. And with the help of your feedback that you are giving, we are trying to improve it. Second is internal validation. It is a systemic process that enables the facility personnel themselves to assess whether sound surveillance methods, optimal healthcare data sources, and the highest caliber data abstraction and the entry are in use when the numerator and the denominator records are completed. The active efforts by a reporting facility to assure the completeness and the accuracy of the surveillance data by hospital infection control representatives. It serves as a means for detecting and preventing some input errors. It helps in the assessment of potential errors in case ascertainment, case classification, like primary versus secondary bloodstream infection, location of attribution, denominator reporting, and risk adjustment variables. It might report, uh, sometimes there is under reporting for the CLAPC cases during the internal validation for which the external validation is required. Sometimes there is misinterpretation of the components of the surveillance process during the internal validation for which we have to be careful. The ability to generate the correct denominator data, line days and the patient days because here in internal validation, we are validating the data manually as well as electronically, both. The ability to identify all the CLAPC events in real time, positive blood cultures in the surveillance locations among the patients with the central line, the routine assessment and track tracking of CLAPC events, ideally by keeping a line list of CLAPC events and relevant decisions related to the reporting outcomes, the ability to correctly apply the CLAPC case definitions, including the ability to differentiate between primary and the secondary bloodstream infections following MOH protocols, which are based on CDC NHSN definitions of 2022. Minimized data entry errors. 
The internal validation helps us to identify and understand the systemic weakness in the facility, a specific highest reporting. It promotes in building the coordination and partnership with the stakeholders, and it builds confidence in your own facility. Now the last external validation. The survey and the audit process by an external team to assure the quality of surveillance and completeness and accuracy of the reporting. It is usually by an external team, GDIPC or regional coordinator or the cluster coordinator who are trained to evaluate the completeness and the accuracy of reporting and assess the surveillance determinations and methods. External validation is usually conducted on site at the included hospitals by the trained validators using NHSN MOH methods and definitions as the gold standard. An external validation usually requires additional resources like auditors experience, safe and secure data transfer or the storage mechanism. Like not anybody can go as auditor, one should have an experience that how to find that where is the missing data, how to relate the definitions, how to validate the case definitions. This is important for the auditor's experience. It targets the facility ranking. After the external validation is done, usually at the end, at the end of month or the quarter or annually, the annual reports or the quarterly reports or semi-annual reports are released based on the findings during the external validation. So it helps in ranking the facilities, which facilities have higher compliance rate, uh, very well validated data. So it helps in the healthcare associate, healthcare facilities ranking. The findings from the external validation, they can be used to correct the reporter misconceptions about the surveillance definitions, criteria and data requirements. Sometimes during our visit, we find that the ICP doesn't know the definition very well. So with the discussion, we learn. We explain to them that where are the deficiencies? You misunderstood this definition. It should be like this. The data should be collected like this. So it helps in making the corrections. It can help assure adherence to specifications for highest reporting by identifying and correcting the shortcomings or the deficiencies that would be difficult to address through internal validation alone. So internal validation or intrinsic validation, they are not enough. The data should be validated externally also. Accountability and the resources. So if we go one by one for intrinsic validation, the surveillance staff, IT departments and the healthcare facility or the service administration is responsible. And the resources required are less once the system is established, it is established. And it is usually automated and continual for internal validation, the surveillance unit within the healthcare facility or the infection control department in the healthcare facility is responsible. Resources are required more as compared to the intrinsic validation and it is periodic. The external validation is by the departments of the health network or the national body responsible for surveillance as in our case is by the regional coordinator or by GDIPC. For this, more resources are required and it is ongoing. It is continuous. Any time, any area can be validated. Any healthcare facility can be validated regarding their surveillance data. Because if the surveillance data is validated, it helps in trying to, or it, it helps to create the prevention activities. And the objective of infection control department is fulfilled. If we try to reduce the healthcare associated infections, it means we have we are leading towards success. Highest data validation by internal validation with consistency with the data completeness and timelineness. It improves the external, the external validation, which is usually validated by the data accuracy. 
If we are not reporting the healthcare associated infections timely, it means we are not doing our work very well. We have to be consistent in our data. We have to uh, collect the data completely as well as timely. If it is not reported timely, it means we are failed. So this we have to keep in our mind. This internal validation, it improves our data accuracy, which is validated externally by the external teams. Thank you. Do you have any question? Thank you. If you have any query, yes. Is there any question? If you have any question, you can send to our email or you can send in the WhatsApp groups. As you know, there are so many groups. We have coordinators group. We have high surveillance groups. CRRS, Go Green, all these groups are for our uh, conversation. Thank you. 